The following video has been created without the use of AI. Please support your human content creators by liking and subscribing and commenting something down below. Thank you. Black, wet feet walked over cold metal flooring. Their quiet tap, tap, tap was accompanied by the noise of rustling seaweed and dripping salt water. A shambling humanoid form hidden beneath thick layers of tentacle-like plant matter. White eyes staring blankly forward at the slowly backwards walking employee of the black site. The man knew he was one of the last survivors of the escaped monsters. He knew it was over, that he would never see the surface again. But to fall into the hands of Z-31 was definitely not a fate he had hoped for. The creature was sometimes referred to as Dread Siren, as beautiful as it was deadly. In its dormant state, the creature's long seaweed-like hair was covering its full black feminine figure completely its skin soft and described by some as darker than black, appearing more like a slowly moving mound of brownish wet leaves. But when it hunted, its eyes glowed white, attracting prey similar to the shine of an anglerfish's lamp. And these eyes were now staring at him. The dread siren had a strange hunting behavior, moving slowly towards prey at a given distance. If he would run too far off, it would break out into a mad sprint that he definitely would not survive. But getting close wasn't an option either, as the seaweed would then immediately animate, attacking like tentacles completely envelop him and slowly suck out his blood until he was nothing but skin wrapped around a skeleton. After analyzing a sample of the seaweed, it was discovered that it was covered in tiny pores, which hit even tinier hollow hooks that secreted a paralyzing agent, as well as having the ability to suck up liquids. In other words... Z-31 was more like a humanoid jellyfish that used the seaweed as a disguise. The employee reached the door. He could feel it with the back of his hands. For a moment, he turned around, averting his gaze from the creature. Out of his pockets, he pulled a keycard. Swiping it through the scanner in the hope the door would open. Come on, come on, come on. Boop. Damn it. The footsteps were coming closer. The men's hairs were standing up. Boop. Crap. Boop. Tears began wallowing in the man's face. But just as his heart felt like it was bursting from the fear of death, Beep, 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 beep. Ugh, he sighed. The door had finally opened, but just as he was about to turn around, he made a horrifying realization. The footsteps had stopped completely, and he was unable to move his legs. Frozen, he managed to slightly turn his head seeing Z-31 right behind him. The seaweed tentacles had wrapped around his left leg, pumping him full of poison. The monster leaned forward, resting its head on the man's shoulder, eyes staring at him. It would be the last thing he'd see. A horrifying, gleeful smile was on the creature's mouth. Z-31 didn't have teeth behind its lips, but its throat was lined with rows and rows of sharp, rotating teeth, similar to a grinder. 
He couldn't believe that just a few hours ago he and a co-worker were making crude jokes about Z-91's feminine appearance. The words, okay, hear me out, having left his lips multiple times. And now... He was going to die by its hands. Her stomach was bloated with the warm blood of the freshly drained security guard. His lifeless, dry corpse lying next to you. It felt wonderfully warm in your belly. Eating nothing but raw fish heads for so long considered an appropriate diet for you. Having the sensation of blood finally filling you was wonderful. Satisfying. You bobbed your head from left to right, similar to how seaweed would move in the ocean. Except that you were dry now and it didn't do much here. It was a simple instinct that happened on its own. So content even your eyes stopped glowing, as you no longer desired to attract food. Stranger though still, it seemed as if a light was hanging above you. The hallway had been dark a couple of minutes ago. Slowly you swiped away some of the tentacles with your hands. You looked up. A fleshy, glowing bulb was hanging above you. Turning your head slowly, it was connected to a quite strange creature. Three arms, tall enough to reach the ceiling of the hallway. Long, heavy serpentine fishtail. Blue glowing eyes. Black hair. This thing was too big to be eaten. So you just stared back. If it touched you, there was poison ready to defend you. But rather than attack you, the monster reached forward with one of its arms, grabbing the piece of plastic from the corpse. <laughs> Yoink! He snickered. Ah, a security level three card. I've been looking for you, my sweet. The monster rubbed the card over his face. Seemed as if a lot of creatures found value in these things. Perhaps you could have collected some too. Did you kill this man? The monster's face came closer to you. You your mouth and he could see the rotating teeth in your throat. Ah, don't worry, sweetheart. I'm not gonna hurt you. Purred the monster. And then you felt its heavy hand place on your head. But not threateningly. It was a touch so gentle it didn't even activate your dangerous hooks. He was... He was petting you. The force was great behind, too. Practically pushing your head back and forth, but it felt... Nice. Your eyes narrowed with pure joy. And weakly your tentacles tried wrapping around his wrist. Not to hurt, but to comfort and to keep his hand in place. But it seemed as if... He saw it as an attempt at aggression. As he quickly retreated his hand. Needily, you stretched your arms out, reaching for him with a pouting expression. Well, I guess I better make my way somewhere safer. The monster's heavy body began to slither past the open door. No, no, come back. When he was about 20 meters away from you, your slow walk turned into a very quick jog. You tried to keep up with him. Hey, come on, stop chasing me. Your speed was about the same as the monster's. You didn't want to scare him further. You stayed slow. You just wanted to be pet more. Your white feet already slipped on the cold metal as you tried to keep up. Face first, you slammed on the floor. 
A desperate, almost human-sounding cry came from you. And the monster stopped. Perhaps... You had hit just the right frequency to cause a protective instinct to occur. The monster shook his head, wondering why he suddenly felt sorry for you. He watched you slowly stand up and approach him. And once you stood next to him, you reached out a hand. Your hand looked almost human. If it wasn't for the countless little tube feet covering the inside of your palm, similar to those of a starfish. He could feel the little antennas rub over his hand as they tried to find purchase after taking your hand. Well, I suppose I could have worse company. Holding his hand, you walked with him for the darkness of the black side. You're not much of a talker, I assume. You looked up at him. When your mouth was closed, it seemed as if your face was as smooth as a mannequin with eyes. Eh, that's a yes, I guess. You did seem to be capable of higher thought. Perhaps you weren't just some dumb animal. Good. Made him feel a little less awkward. Regardless of that, my name is Sebastian Solus. He placed one hand on his chest as he spoke. But you just stood your head in confusion. And then another shriek came from you. Is that your name? He shook his head. No, even if it was, he could definitely not pronounce that. Finally, you and Sebastian arrived at what seemed to be a security office. Now this looks promising. He pushed his large body inside. Ah, nice high ceiling, computers, ooh, sample vials, and... Oh. He reached for a cabinet. Documents! He opened the first drawer his large claw flicking through the files contained within. Meanwhile, you stared through the room. You didn't understand anything, nor could you comprehend the technology. How could you? You had lived 90% of your life at the bottom of the Great Barrier Reef, preying on divers. At least until you were taken by the men in black. Your gaze suddenly shifted to the hulking Sebastian. Your eyes transfixed on his massive tail. It was swinging from left to right. Like a cat, you got on all fours, watching the shark fin bob up and down. With a shaking hand, you reached for it. Your fingertips brushed over the sleek, flabby skin of his tail, and Sebastian blinked. The touch wasn't strong enough for him to fully register. If anything, it felt like wind brushed up against him. Meanwhile, your eyes widened at the sensation. You looked at your hand. The small moving antennas wiggled in delight. His skin felt... Amazing. And without warning, you slammed your hand on it. Sebastian's entire body shook as the noise of a slap echoed in the room. He slowly turned his face towards you. Did you just... He thought for a moment. While you innocently tilted your head. Technically, this was the closest thing to you slapping his... Slap my ass? You blinked, not understanding his words. He chuckled and casually pushed the drawer back. And scared, you pressed your body against the ground. But Sebastian was faster and stronger. 
His massive hand picked you up by the hip, like an oversized action figure. But as you tried following his gaze, he was fixated on your heaving chest. Confused, you tilted your head. It was in this moment that he realized you were a girl. With all the necessary parts where they belonged. He exhaled slowly, setting you back down without hurting you. Sebastian then looked at his hand. The feeling of you. Soft skin. It was lingering in his palm. He was feeling hot and quite bothered. The monster shook his head. What loneliness does to a man, huh? Hearing a quiet thud, he looked up from his hand. You were kneeling down. You were on your knees, curiously staring up at him, wondering why he didn't attack. After a moment of hesitation, Sebastian's hand shot forward, placing it on your head, rubbing over your skull. Your toes curl with excitement as you place both of your hands on his. A moment later, he closed his eyes and then increased the pressure on you for a moment. Your eyes flashed in a bright white as you are pushed on the ground, its heavy body slithering forward pinning you to the ground. It's strange, you didn't feel any aggression. No, this wasn't an attack. There was no need to defend yourself. You felt its hand wrap over your body. Similar to the petting from earlier, but you could feel so much more of him now. Your eyes narrowed in enjoyment, and you opened your mouth, panting. Ah. Uh, you like this? He mumbled more to himself than to you. His other hand placed down next to your head as he pushed his head forward, hovering just over your face. You looked at him curiously as he used his other to continue fondling your body. Well, I'll be. Might be the fish in me, but... <laughs> I guess I fucked worse. Like that one chick in uni, he thought. Holly was her name. Hmm. Maybe this said more about Holly than you that he considered her worse. After all, you were some random freak of nature that drank blood and fed on fish heads. Though you did have a beautiful figure. His fingers traced you down your body. Down to your navel. And he heard you inhale sharply. The tip of his claw tracing its rim. <sighs> now that was a noise he recognized coming from you. Sebastian smiled. You were totally into this. You wanted this. Okay. Now listen, the monster mused. I don't know exactly where my dick is now. I just know I have one, somewhere around here. With his third hand, he pointed somewhere around his tail. But I'm sure with a little effort, we can figure out where it is. Little seaweed. You blinked, and then he lowered his massive jaw, Kissing you on your mouth. To a surprise, you returned the kiss. Even going as far as to use two long pink tentacle-like tongues that were hiding deep within your gut. He could feel them prod against his maw. Amused, you opened his mouth, allowing your little tongues to slide, touch and wrap around his own. It was quite pleasant. Okay, then. Having a little girlfriend down here would certainly make time go by faster.
Hey, thank you for making it to the very end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and please remember to like and subscribe. But before I say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely channel members. Especially my darling Stuarts. Husky HD17, Bella Mare, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. I couldn't do this without your help. Thank you for your continued support. Anyways, I hope you have a nice day. Goodbye.